Hey guys, on the build show today, we're gonna show you a technique that I've used several times, which really solves a problem. We're actually at my house. This is the real rebuild project. And if you remember, this started out as a remodel and ended up as a new build. And that's part of where the issue comes from. I'm on my front porch right now. And then this is the house here. And you see at the front porch, I've got a curb that I poured right here uh, where the front door is gonna be installed. This big opening here is for my front door. And I've got a nice generous sized front porch, but because the slab height was here already, when I poured the front porch and the garage slab was over here, I was a little bit constrained on elevations. I couldn't get as much slope as I wanted to out of the porch. And I also have only just a little bit of curb on the rest of the house. I poured this taller curb here, but if you could uh, kind of peel back the walls, you'd see that I only have uh, three quarters of an inch or so between this concrete porch and my slab on the other side of this wall. So here's what we've done. Two things. For air sealing, I use some of this um, Prosico product called Joint and Seam Filler. That's what that pink is in between there. That can act as a waterproofing as well, but this isn't necessarily its intended purpose. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put a stainless flashing in. I like these stainless flashings because they're going to last a long time. And we're going to put a kerf cut into the concrete so that we can actually put a lip down in there. You'll notice when I had this bent, I had them bend a hem on here. This is just 26 gauge stainless, so a fairly lightweight stainless. It should last a long time though. I also had them give me corner pieces that are soldered. So this inside corner here and this inside corner, I've got a soldered piece. Now this corner here, just kind of a small corner. This corner here, my curb actually extends all the way into the corner. So all I'm gonna do is just take this corner over six, eight inches, something like this. What I'm really trying to do is on my porch here, if, if this ever got power washed, if it ever had a massive storm and a bunch of water came in here, I'm just making sure that water doesn't migrate back towards my house. Now I do have a good overhang here on the porch. I actually have two feet on the front of the slab. So it's not gonna get a lot of water. I'm also gonna put gutters on, that's really important. But let me show you the process here. Basically what we're doing is we snapped a string line. We've, we use a nice thin line. I use my, uh, my good Tajima uh, chalk line. We snapped a line and we measured that line between the wall and the kerf because what I'm looking to do is have that kerf sink into the, um, into the kerf and the concrete. I'm not super worried about the thinness of that kerf. If you made it real thin, you might be able to really pound this in but I really want it to go in so I can get a bead of sealant in there. Now we did that on all sides, and then you'll notice uh, that we also are gonna be cutting the flashing so it's a butt joint on here. You could overlap this a little bit if you have the opportunity, that's always good, but we're really gonna make sure our sealant does the heavy duty lifting for us. Now let's talk sealants for a minute. There's a bunch of different options you could put in this spot, but I think probably one of the better options is a true butyl base sealant. Now this is what I'm gonna be using on my through wall flashing later from Brick. Um, this is called BTL-1 sealant. This is from the guys at Mortarnet Solutions. This is pretty similar to what you'd see as a, a gutter sealant. Gutter sealant needs to be able to flow into the seams and be totally waterproof and also stick well to metal. This also is gonna stick well to our concrete because this is also being used later for my through wall flashing. Stay tuned to that future video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a bead all the way down that the flashing can sit into. We're also gonna run it down onto the uh, kerf cut. And then we're gonna put a couple of screws just in a few places on the stainless. All right, let me get back to work. Okay, so I got my adhesive, uh, my butyl flash rather, into that corner. Now I'm gonna put an, a bead all the way down on the shelf right here. And then I'm also running a bead into the kerf where that stainless is gonna sit with that edge that has the hem on it. And what this is gonna do is keep water from backing up towards the house. Now I am gonna cover this concrete later. It's gonna get a, uh, some porch boards. So I'm not super worried about the aesthetics. And also you'll notice this flashing's coming out about two inches. I've got a two inch insulation detail and then I've got a rain screen and then I've got a James Hardy siding going on. So I'm actually gonna have a little over three inches out from the face of my Huber zip before I actually get to the finish. So this flashing is gonna be mainly covered up 
And then ultimately when I put the deck boards down over top of this deck, it'll be totally covered up. So really this is just the detail to make sure that I'm waterproof for the life of this house. That's why the stainless and this butyl is gonna last a long time in here too. And then later we're gonna come in with a brick uh, through wall flashing from these guys from Mortarnet too. Okay, we, we ran a bead down in the curve cut here, and then we ran the flashing all the way down. We're gonna knock it in and put a screw or two in it, and then we'll zip tape it off. And uh, that should be a really nice backstop for us. All right, y'all, we're basically done here. We're just putting a, a last flashing step on here uh, to shingle this to make sure any water coming down this wall washing down here is uh, not gonna get behind this flashing. And, uh, and then in the future, stay tuned for a video on this flashing I'm gonna do here with uh, Mortarnet. That's a really cool flash I'm excited about. And remember, my brick is actually coming back to like right here. So I wanted to run this out as far as possible. We're gonna J-roll this um, to make sure that sticks nicely. And then we're done. This should last for the next 100 plus years. And again, we're just making sure that water doesn't back up underneath the house. This isn't an air sealing detail. It's really just a long-term waterproofing detail. It can be really handy to do this when you've got slabs that don't have a lot of uh, height difference. Thanks for joining me on the Build Show, guys. If you'd like more information on this detail, I'll put a link to a couple different manufacturers in the description below. There's some good people that have some information on this online. I also have done some other videos on this same detail. Uh, no one sponsored this video, but the guys at Mortarnet did give me the beetle flashing for free, so big thanks to those guys. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.